Ten years ago today, the town secured promotion back to the Football League. Who was the mastermind behind it all? There's only one man we need to speak to. That man, John Stewart. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. How, How are, are we? Yeah, good, good to see, see you. Let's have a little chat, yeah. shall we? Come in. I want to take this club as far as it believes it can go. Stronger the team, stronger the team. Control the controllable. <laughs> Still, good to see you, mate. Yeah, good to see you. Looking well and all, mate. Likewise, yeah, yeah, likewise. Yeah, well, trying, haven't we? Been a while, hasn't it? It has, yeah. When did you? 2016, the same year as you, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, probably, yeah. 2016, but I went to Upminster and you went to uh, Austria. Didn't we? Exactly, and then <laughs> since then they went all the way to the Premier League. I know, mate. And they're doing better with ours, huh? Yeah, I think so. Incredible. Seriously, never happened again, I don't think. No, I incredible. don't think that will ever happen again. Not the way it's been done. Not in that time scale. Ten years ago, though. That's why we're here, to kind of celebrate that anniversary of um, what many Luton fans say is the most important promotion of, of all of them, I'd say. Um, yeah, must sure have some... <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously last season was a special one, but I think that to, to, to kick it all off the one ten years ago, to get out of the conference, you know how yeah. difficult it is to get out of that yeah. division, having done it many times beforehand. You still remember it like it was yesterday, that, that season? Yeah, I, I, I do actually. Um, I mean, I, I think, like, you, you remember all the good times, you don't remember mm. the bad times so much as, as, as the good times, and um, that was, it was a sensational season. It really, it really was, um, for me, uh, a sensational season. For the players, a sensational season. For supporters and people that have stuck by the club, like the directors, um, I think it was a monumental season for them. I really do. Um, I mean, one thing that was noticeable to me from from day one was the resentment there was towards the the FA, uh, purely by the songs they sung um, and the way they spoke about how they'd been treated and. Uh, I think they felt that they got their rightful place back um, for, on the pitch where they think they lost their place off the pitch. And uh, so I think it, that made it a moment, you know, monumental season, I think, for, for lots of people. When you were approached by the club to, to take over, did you have any reservations about that? Did you think, you know, I, I think you actually said at the time, you know, I could... You had a comfortable job at Dagenham, doing the you know at a club you love, doing really well at the club you love, yeah. and then to you know to go to a, a club like Luton, having so many issues, to trying to get out of the conference with all that hate and angst towards the football authorities. Yeah. You could have done you could have done without it, really, couldn't you? You could have just yeah, had an I, easy life. Yeah, I, I suppose. I suppose. Yeah, I could have done, but you know what? I, I did take a little bit of advice, I'm not going to tell you from who, but a couple of people in particular, one that would know the club Luton well. Um, and I, it's, it's a crazy situation because I'm a, brought up a West Ham and a Dagnum supporter and I played for Dagnum and I'm managing Dagnum and I had success with Dagnum. And uh, when, when other jobs have come up, you know, I was quite happy, I was seriously quite happy at Dagnum. Um, but I don't know, there was just something, you know, when it was sort of going on and I had to really decide, I, it was just something that made me think, you know, it, it, no, one, no one's been able to do it and that's not knocking the people because I think they had good managers before me, I really do. Um, so I just felt... I've got to try this. I've got, you know, if I, f I thought I would regret not giving it a go if 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 I didn't do it. Um, 
I was asked at the time about coming out of the league. Um, Dagenham were in the league to come out of the football league and come back to the national league. That, but that never bothered. I ain't been. That didn't bother me. I'm not a sort of person that I don't worry about um, leagues and things. I just want to worry about where I work and being happy where I work and getting satisfaction where I work, whatever. So in the end. I just, I, I had a, a chat with Terry Harris, um, who was aware of, of of what was going on, and I said, "Tell, I'm, I'm going to do this," um, and you want to come with me? Yeah, we're going to come with me, and we we had, we sat down and had a chat for half an hour about it, and uh, that was when I decided, and I think. It, I think it was one of those things where I felt to myself, if I could do this, it's going to be amazing mm. because this is a club that shouldn't have been at the level they was at, you know, and they lost it through what went off off of the pitch. And I, I just felt that if if we could do it, it would be something a bit special. That's that's how I felt at the time and. Um, the actual person that perhaps, he didn't put me off, but told me how it was, our supporters were anxious and, um, and and how the situation was because of what had gone on. I think that gave me a push to do it, if anything, you know, I thought, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I was... Did you feel that when you, when you, when you came in? Did you feel that immediately? Yeah, straight away. Um, it, whoever I spoke to, I probably didn't speak to many people that didn't mention we shouldn't be in this league and FA what they've done to us and and all that and um, and we've been in the playoffs so we didn't do it and I was I'm saying moaning but it, it was more than moaning it wasn't aimed at anyone in particular but like if we can't get out of this league what's going to happen to us everyone's useless and do you know what I mean it was. You know, they weren't saying individuals were useless, but, you know, we can't do this and can't do that. And I just, there was an anxiety mm. a, a, about, around the place. I felt there was an anxiety. Um, and I felt that there was sort of a, a feeling that um, if, if they don't get out of this league, that the club's going to fold eventually because people won't stand by it as that long. And it was just a whole mass of things without any one, in, one thing in particular, you know. But um, that, that sometimes can be the, the, the switch that you need to go, well, I'll tell you what, I think I can do it. And in the end, uh, I did it. Took, it, took the chance to do it. Expectation level, obviously, at, at Dagenham, Expectation was, I mean, you drive your own expectation of what you perceive to be. Yeah. You know, Dagenham punching for, for so long, probably above their weight, getting yeah. all the way up. Yeah. You, you're getting them up to, to League One, fantastic achievement. But Luton, obviously down in the conference and, and, and struggling to get out of that league, not managing expectation. So how was that for you to deal with, knowing that the fan base at Dagenham were just absolutely thrilled to be yeah. in the third tier mm. and then come into a club like Luton where it's the complete the complete opposite yeah. how how did you deal with that personally the and and you know this is probably three or four more times a fan base of Luton compared to yeah. Dagenham so yeah. how did you deal with that personally talking about the amount of phone calls you have to take the amount of criticism perhaps you have to take yeah. the amount of people you have to deal with as well as the fact it's a it's a bigger club than than, than Dagenham, yeah. I, I, I don't, I couldn't give a definite answer on that. You know, me, me as a person, I'm, ve I'm very confident of of myself, very confident of what I do, even if I do it wrong. You know, I'm, I'm confident in doing it, and I'm never a person to look back and go, I should have or I shouldn't have. When I make the decision at a time. That's the decision, whether it's right or wrong. I never look back and go, oh, it was the wrong decision, because it's easy to do that. I just go, it was the right decision at the time, but it didn't work out. So uh, the, the actual situation I found myself in 
um, the amount of supporters, the, the amount of grumbles, not necessarily all the time, but I, I, I can wash that over. I, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't directly affect me, to be honest. And I knew that somewhere along the line, there was going to be something that would uh, come out and make me think this is bigger than, than perhaps I thought it was. This mm. is more important to people than perhaps I, I thought it was. Um, but by and large, you know, I wasn't over affected. The biggest thing you worry about is how much it affects players, which is a really, really, really important reason that when you bring players in, They've not just got to be good players, they've got to be able to handle the situation that they're playing in. Mm. Um, so I was confident that I could do, could do that and that we could overcome those obstacles. Did I, did I believe that we would win the league uh, in my time there? 100%. Did you think you'd get us to win the league? In your first full season, I'm not sure of that. I, I, I. What did you think we needed to do? Because I mean, you came in February, I think February, yeah, March. Yeah. What did you do in those few months that was so vital for the following season to be able to get us in that yeah, position I, to win the, the title? I, I think that, that that time was valuable in looking at players and thinking who can play for me. Mm. That doesn't mean to say the players I didn't keep weren't good players, but I, I have a way of, of doing things that has worked for me, so why would I change? You know, why would I change? Luton wanted me to come to manage their football club on what I'd done somewhere else, so I wasn't going to change how I did it, but players might have to change how they did it, uh, and if I didn't see that in them, then maybe it wasn't going to be the right sort of marriage, um, which didn't mean to say that they weren't decent players. That was well, yeah, it's a culture thing, it. isn't it? It is. No, ab absolutely. Um, and I think within three or four games, I, I, I probably knew really what I needed. Um, I was a bit fortunate that I was able to, you know, bring in the players that I brought in sometimes they're not available and that can then put you back a little bit because I'd be very reluctant to sign someone just because I need that position I want the player that I want um, but fortunately we was able to to get what I wanted but some of the players that were there when when we actually got going in the start of the following season um, was still a bit slow to pick it up, you know, how I wanted to do it. Andre was a classic example. Um, he took a little bit of time to, to pick it up. And what helped me was when Paul Benson came in because he knew how I wanted my forwards to play. And he was very good for Andre. He mm -hmm. was good, to, you know, and they'd become good, good together. Um, and the, the reliability of, of players, you know, is really important that go out and you can rely on them to try to play the way that the team needs to play um, regularly, consistently. And we took a little bit of time um, to, to get it all together um, in the first season that I come and to, you know, yeah, right, that's what I need to do. So close season, I was aware what we needed and we, we, we cracked on and, and brought some players in. I've always been the lover of young, hungry players. Um, so that that was important that I, I had that enthusiasm in the team as well. But you need your little bit of experience, which Paul Benson give us and Guts give us. We had Mecca and Ronnie at the back as well that, that, that give us that. Um, we had Smudge midfield that, that, that give us that as well. So, but the others, I needed enthusiasm, I needed athleticism. And I just felt that when we started the, the, the following season, we had that in place. 
and we had a good pre-season but we started I think slowly I thought we started slowly but when we were training I could see all the things I wanted to see I could mm. see it all and I, I said to her, I can't, I can't there's something there's a switch here we've got to to get and um, we played I remember the game we played all way at Wrexham and after the game I knew that I hadn't got it right and I was toying with it before the game I was toying with what I wanted to do I thought no I'll give it one more go at this in case it isn't but I was toying but when the game was over I actually knew what my step was to, to what I thought make it work and it was just a couple of positional changes you know same players but slightly change how they play one being guts uh, really important to get him further forward just to find the the players that we needed to find in the final third and from then on we clicked should we have a drink yeah so that that game after Wrexham I think you actually came out in the press and said that you were, were toying with that kind of change and then I mean as you say after that away we went yeah it, it I just I just felt that we were getting into the final third but we, we weren't making enough happen but how long were, how long were you thinking about that though was that like a for uh, if I'm honest probably for about three games three okay. or four games it I could see it wasn't quite right but what I couldn't see I couldn't see how I could change it without making something else not work. Mm. So I, I thought, no, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it. Um, and, but during the game, during the Wrexham game, I was actually gonna change it at half time. I was actually gonna change it around at half time. But being stubborn, and I am stubborn, because I thought the way that we were playing originally would work. I thought, no, I'm gonna, I'll see this game through just mm. in case it does. And um, no, so we weren't, we, we weren't flowing. We, we could have good moves, we could have good moments, we, but we weren't flowing. The ball was coming back a bit too quick. Um, so I thought, no, I, I, I'll, I'll give it a go, but this ain't working. But thought I knew what would work and 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 it did and it did yeah and it good <laughs> <laughs> so guts higher and obviously playing Andre a little bit yeah. out to the wide yeah, as well play, uh, yeah I thought like you know if, I, if, I, if I've got Andre one side um, we had Jonathan Smith and obviously when Benno came in mm. and I had good choices the other side with Alzi and, and Law this and Cully was a good player, was a good goal scorer and a good player. So I just thought, I always thought that if we get the ball with quality in the final third, these are all good players, mm. that, that they can do the rest. Mm. But I just need someone that could knit that. And, uh, and Guts did it, to be fair to him. But the, the other lads um, all, all contributed. You know, they all had, we had, we had good energy. Um, Smudge, as you know, he'd win the ball back for you. Um, Matt Robinson's enthusiasm and running power, you know, was, was excellent. Um, and gradually as we went, I mean, I, I, I can remember uh, some games where free in midfield was Robbo, I think was 19, mm -hmm. Pelly, who was 19, and Cam, who was 19. Yeah. And we won the league. I think oh. yeah, going to Grim. I think Grimsby midweek. We, I mean, a yes. notorious place to, to yes. go, especially midweek. And yeah, and we were those three teenagers in the middle of midfield. I know, and but that's that gives me not as much pleasure as winning, mm. but it gives me great pleasure that those three. That, that, it's a responsibility. That, I mean, it's a massive it? responsibility. Massive responsibility. But the 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 thing is as well. Not only did they contribute 
Still got the same ringtone, have you? Of course I am. <laughs> of course I am. Not only, not only That's perfect, did, that is. Not only did they... Funny you hear that coming on. Not only did they contribute, Cam went, went on and got a good move. Yeah. Pelly, as we know... No idea what he's up to. Uh, he's doing that. And Robbo's had a, a decent, you know, a decent yeah. career. And I, I just feel that, you know, maybe... As you see, I'm not very good. Uh, it's strong, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is. But it's good, you know, I look back and think those three young players played for Luton mm. and have stayed in the game and had good careers. That gives me as much pleasure as winning a, winning a football match, if yeah. I'm honest, it does. And I think... I mean, uh, You'd probably be the first person to say as well. It gives you the most, like throughout, not just at Luton, but throughout your career, you've had this reputation. Thank you for bringing young players through and, yeah. and giving them, them an opportunity, and and then going on to have great careers in the game. Yeah, but it is. It's something that I've all, all you know, that I've always wanted to do is like give people an opportunity an opportunity um, and the, the game itself is more athletic now yeah. it's more athletic now than it was 10 years ago but even then it was getting that way you had to be able to be mobile you had to have a bit of pace you had to run and I'd never had any problems in picking young players to play I, it was never anything that concerned me and it's fantastic when they go on and, and do do well for themselves. I mean, the following year, the, the year was up, we brought Jack in as well, Jack Marriott. Mm. And I love Jack. And he's come in and he's had a good career. Jack's had a good career. So, you know, the, the, the ones that we brought in have all had good careers, all contributed to what's happened with, with Luton. And um, other than Pelly, the others have gone on and had good careers elsewhere. That's, that's brilliant. So at the start of that season, as you said, you were unsure whether or not we would win the league straight away. But how did it make you feel when you? I guess you probably had that eureka moment where you thought, actually, yeah, we're actually we actually are going to do it this season. You you might not believe me. I thought we would re reasonably just after Christmas. Mm. We was we was playing well. We was winning, and I I remember talking to Terry and hack and uh, I thought we we're going to win the league so I'll tell you we're going to get better and better and better mm. it's, you know I really felt we I could see it you know and, I, and the atmosphere that we were creating amongst ourselves uh, training traveling away there was an atmosphere about the place that I'd felt before and I thought it was building. It was, it was, it was a sense of momentum, wasn't it? It was, and uh, and we become a team that I, I used to call ma magic moment. We 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 could be playing and playing all right, and all of a sudden we'd have ten fifteen minutes where we score three or four goals. We, yeah. we had that in there, and um, you know, Benno could score, Andre could score, Cully could score, Guts could score. You know, we had people that w would come up with goals. But when I looked at the ingredients that, that we had, and I, I always have, and that's a bit soppy, people that don't understand football, but I don't understand it, but really important, we, in, like ingredients, I always to say, you, you, you can have anything you like. So I'm going to bake this cake, and I've got all the best ingredients, but I haven't got any sugar, and so it ain't going to work, is it? Because yeah. you ain't got that ingredient. But I just thought we had all the ingredients. We had good organisation at the back, Ronnie, excuse me, Ronnie, Macca, and Tiles. Tiles who had played for me at, po at Peter. I mean, Barrow players you inherited as well. Yeah. So I mean, it's no. a, an, ele an element of not no. fortune, but you know, no. it's great that you the, were able to the, do that kept the back four in check and that. and then in midfield as I say smudge you could you know win win challenges you wouldn't expect to win but they could all run they could all run and they could all they all brought an ingredient um, 
uh, Robbo had great energy up and down. You know, his enthusiasm was, was, was top drawer. Uh, Pelle, who had pace, he had power, he had strength, he had quality. Uh, we had that there that was good. Cam that could get in the box and score goals. We had, we had all the ingredients here. How did you get these players to play for Luton Town in this way? I mean, as I say, like you inherited a, a, quite a, a, no, a, strong, yeah. a strong squad to start with. Yeah. You did add those elements, but let's not touch on what previous managers perhaps didn't do, but what, what exactly, I mean, what did you tell the players? I mean, they'd come into a football club that was on its knees, struggling to get out of one of the toughest divisions. Uh, it, I don't know, like Rob, Robbo Touchwood was there, wasn't he? Mm. So, so that, that answered that question. Um, Pelly, I'm um, being a West Ham person, I've seen Pelly at West Ham uh, playing centre half and the centre midfield. And when we took him on loan, I, I just knew his energy and his strength and his power. And at an age, he should get naturally better anyway. He should get, and playing men's football, mm. playing regular men's football, I, f I felt w would, would make him better. Um, so, yeah, I was comfortable doing that. Obviously, brought him on loan and had to talk him into making that permanent. He's leaving a Premier League club to come to a, a National League club. So th that was difficult. And obviously, taking Cam from Norwich. Um, I've seen him play at Norwich a couple of times. I sent someone else to have a look. One of the scouts come back and went, yeah, he's... he's it worked for me at Dagnum, the, the scout, so he knew what, what I liked. Good energy, gets up and down, he's got goals in him. Perfect. Uh, when I went and saw him, yeah, I thought, yeah, I, I can see that. Um, and Cam, he wasn't shy. He was 19, but he wasn't shy. He was a bit forceful. He, he, you know, he, he wasn't one of these boys that you had to rally to, to get on with it. No, he, he got on with it. And uh, fortunately, the, the group, that group, um, along with Smudge uh, and Guts in that midfield area, you know, whatever I picked, had the ingredients that could, could win the game. What other defining moments of that season were there? Because I, I think we were speaking to Ronnie a couple of weeks ago and um, there was this moment with a fan against, uh, <laughs> <laughs> against Lincoln where... <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. that was I think that was where the the the, the huddle kind of yeah. was first. I mean, I know you did it before with uh, at Dagenham. I yeah, think, I did it. Yeah, this was a real part of the season that kind of massive. got everyone on board. Ma 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 massive, massive part. Um, I think did we play Halifax or Lincoln? I can't remember what the game was, but I, I come off and I see Ronnie having words and. But the crazy thing was, the people around the guy that was were telling him to shut up. So I just went, I was like, you know, calm down, you know, get excited. I think Ronnie said he was moaning at half time when we mm. was losing and we won the game, didn't we? And I said, mate, listen, it's a football match, like, you know, we're doing all right, you know, leave it with me. Leave it. And he, in the end, he, he was actually all right. He, he was fine, obviously, a bit more to say to Ron than, than, than to me. And uh, we just said after the game or on the Monday, let's find out who he is, get him in and t ask him what his problems are and see if we can tell him anything. And to be fair, he came in a bit sheepish and, and, and he was right. But, you know, supporters, it, it, it's weird, isn't it? Like, you know, that they, they're entitled to be upset. If the team don't do well, don't get me wrong. It's how, it's how they vent it. It is difficult. I mean, I've, I've got a great one from when I first come. We lost to Hyde. Mm -hmm. And I was walking across. Have I told you the story before? Yes, yeah, so I won't repeat it. But, <laughs> um, and he gave You heard some stuff that night, didn't you? Yeah, from him. Right, yeah. But it's funny, when we won the league, I've... Thought, I wonder if I can find that fella, like, but he wasn't there. I don't know, he might have been there, but I didn't. But, but listen, you know, I'm not only a football manager, uh, I'm a football supporter, you know, and I am, I'm a supporter of football. 
and I'm a supporter of West Ham, I'm a supporter of Dagenham. And if I go to the games, West Ham don't play well, or don't do well, or Dagenham don't play well, don't do well, I get disappointed. But because of the job I do, I don't start shouting at the manager and all things like that. But I do, I do, un, I do understand. Uh, absolutely, I, I do. Um, but I think it, it was a, a time where we were just trying to get the team together. Mm. And I didn't particularly want too many knocks. You know, I, I didn't mind not playing so well. I didn't mind... Because I knew that, you know, in my mind, I knew we would get to where we wanted to get to. And the more support we got, the quicker I felt it, 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 it would happen. Uh, that happened. And that coincided really with us getting it sort of underway. And mm. once we got it underway, that there was, I didn't think there was any stopping us. I really didn't. We were behind Cambridge for a long part of the season and managed to overhaul them. Yeah. Was, it, was it kind of good to have someone to challenge us in a way like that was of it of course of course you know it's it, you know some sometimes you you can be playing and winning games and you're winning easy or comfortable and all of a sudden your standards drop because you're not working as hard because mm. you don't have to work so hard and when you have to try and work a bit harder it's not in you so i think the competition was was perfect and I think that it being, um, I think people say like, you know, because Richard Money who had been obviously there, and I knew Richard be before all, all this, um, had gone there. And so I thought that give it a little bit of edge. And I like edge, you know, I do, I, I like edge. And um, I, I felt that kept it going for, for a while. They were a good side. Uh, he'd done a good job there. They had good players. Um, but I think we, we, just, we just got into, into like a, a rhythm and it almost started to manage itself. You know, the belief, the desire, you know. I, did you I, have... Did you have less to almost say at that point you, 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 yeah when when you're in the midst of a 27 match unbeaten run yeah i, I, I guess that's with the experience that we had in the dressing room as well like, yeah i guess yeah i've always been one as well like at half time in games I, I don't i don't go straight in the dressing room because i like the players to say things and don't care what they are amongst themselves even if it's Chatting and other, and I, I actually do like that. And then, I, then I go in. Uh, I get one of my spies to stand outside the doors and tell me what's going on. So Terry or Hat will go in. Yeah, they're having a bit of a row. Are they yeah. doing this or you know? So. But you don't win anything without having a good group of players. Like character-wise, you, you you don't. You know, not everyone's got a shout and other. Someone can just say something quietly, but that can be enough to you know. People go, "Oh, he said something. It's unusual for him." But we had the perfect mix. But, you know, if we wanted a strong voice, you know, Macca and Ronnie and Tiles, to be fair, would have their say, guts a little bit. Um, but people like Benno, you know, would, would talk quietly to you. You know, would, would, you know, I can imagine Benno going up to Andre and Cully and whoever and, and, and sort of saying, hey, we've got to do a bit better here. You know I me, mean? we've got to do a bit better, I think, you know, so ingredients, you know, and that's what I'm saying. I knew I had those ingredients. So 10 years now since we did the business, I mean, we almost did it earlier. We had brain treat at Kenworth Road when everyone came out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> everyone, what? everyone came out and we. Uh... I've, got, I've never really said this, but I've got to say, you know what? I come to the game and I thought it was a carnival. I was waiting for like someone to come out who was juggling outside the thing and not with a red nose on it because it was, were well, we going to beat these? Yeah. And I said, I remember saying to Terry and Ack in the office, I'm uneasy about this. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm uneasy. And it's funny, the last week I went to Hornchurch just up the road, my local team. Uh, Daryl McMahon's there, who, who I know well, and some of the players there. Uh, playing for Hornchurch, I know well, 
and one that they're catching is um, my niece's husband, so a little bit of an attachment to, to, to all church. They had one game to play to win the league. I thought, oh, that'd be brilliant, I'd go and watch it. They were shocking. <laughs> <laughs> they got beat, they were shocking. I spoke to the manager after Darrell and I said to him, you're going to win the league, this has happened. And I explained about the Luton situation. It was like a carnival atmosphere, yeah. I hate it, you know, it's about football, come on, it's about football. But it, it, was, like, I mean, it was always a matter of time at, at that point, I think. Yeah, it was, way, no, no, of, of course it was. Um, I, th I think for lots of people, the defining moment was probably away to Cambridge. Mm -hmm. I, I would think, I think that sealed it really. I mean, we had to collapse after that. Yeah. We're never going to do that. A couple of games before that, I felt it was our time. I, I, I thought, I didn't say nothing, but I thought, we've got to collapse not to do this now. You know, we've really got to collapse. And uh, we were never going to collapse. You know, it's not possible. We were never going to collapse. I mean, I think the team showed that in so many games. I mean, the Cambridge game, Mark mm. Cullen late mm. goal. I think, it, you know, club close to here, Dartford as well. Two late oh, goals, no. one from Pelly and Andre. Absolutely. You know, so yeah, we, we had the, you had all of the, the, the right characters in the team. Just whatever their, whatever so they their overcome age. anything. Yeah, yeah overcome anything. Um, and that's the important thing, you know, is to overcome obstacles. You know, because the games can can be difficult for whatever reason. You cannot be having the game, having the best day. Their goalkeeper can be outstanding. The players come into loot and big crowd and playing better than perhaps the, the, you know the best of their ability, which makes it difficult. But the best players find a way of overcoming that. You mm. know, and if it wasn't Andre, it might be Cully. If it wasn't Cully, it'd be Benno. If it wasn't Benno, it might be Guts. Do you know what I mean? We, we had enough people that, that could make a difference in games. And some of the, the two-touch football that we, we were playing around that time, some of the goals, you know, I'm not a great one for, for looking back at things, but uh, my, my uh, grandchildren, who, two of my grandchildren were football mad. Ones he, he just started seeing at school 11, so she's right into her own phone now and she goes on it and she looks up things and she says, oh, granddad, there's something on here about loot. I want to show you this about loot. And she shows me goals from loot. And, mm. and uh, I look back and I go, oh, God, they're good goals. You know, the Kidderminster the game where we scored some great goals. And Hereford where we scored, like, the movement and... It's some of the best football that you've ever seen as a manager. Absolutely. No, it, it, it was, ter it was t terrific stuff. It really was. I mean, pe people say to me, obviously, that how do I compare winning with Luton to winning with Dagnum and winning with Maidstone? And I thought, you can't compare. They're different times, different mm. people, different ways. You know, it's really difficult because... You know, my dad was a Dagnum supporter. I was a Dagnum supporter. Dagnum winning the league and going into uh, Div 1 is just, like, for me, like, phenomenal. Honestly, mm. it's it just, you know, just unbelievable uh, to think that Dagnum, which would be a, a typical Ishmian League team, mm. to do that... Uh, and the players that we produced at that time, like was 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 just like fantastic for me, like personally. Um, the Maidstone one, you know, I wasn't a Maidstone supporter. We won the league; it was great, it was good, and and it was fantastic for everyone. The Luton one, because of what Luton had gone through, made it bigger. Do you know what I mean? It just the whole story of it made it like so special and and I, I did look back with not with regret I did look back you know I would always look at Dagnum's results mm. and when we had to play Dagnum in games I didn't really <laughs> I didn't really want to play the games but you've got to play the games you know but you know D Dagnum still one of the, the, the games, I look for West Ham, mm. I, look, I look for Luton, and I look for Dagnum, I do. You know, I want those, those clubs to, to, to do well. But I think Luton, 
for what it meant to so many people um, because of the way they came out of the league, I knew that it was special for a, a really valid reason. Taking away what it might have meant to other people, what did it, what did it mean to you and how much fun did you have managing this club? You know, we you know had we talked about it earlier that the people were sending in control to controllables mugs. You've got all the the stillisms that you used yeah. to come out with, and a lot of people have a lot of a lot of love and respect for you, John, for what for what you did there. And I'm not I don't know how much you're aware of the affection that you that that you are held in by the Luton supporters, but there's a lot. Put it that way. Um, now I, I am aware. I I, I am aware. Um, I, listen, I was, I'm going to say lucky um, in terms of Luton. Terry, who had worked with me for a long while, right, the best number two anyone could ever, ever add. And we, we laughed every day. I know it sounds, you know, but wherever I've worked with Terry at, at Dagnum and, and Luton, and we brought hack in as well to to Luton. We we laughed every day, seriously. Well, it was never a dull moment in the office. We when, we, when we I was laughed ev every single day, and we I think we we created an atmosphere that was good to work in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am aware of of what Luton supporters think about me, which is which is fantastic, and they oh, you know you started it all off and all that. Small bit, I've done a small bit. Um, the club has grown since then and lots of people, you know, people that supporters don't always see have had maybe a smaller part, but not a less valuable part to, to have played in it. Um, I think that uh, Gary, uh, Dave Wilkinson, I can't even remember all, all of the lads. Um, Bob. Bob, Mike, Mike, yeah, yeah Mike Carrick, Bob. Yeah. You know, those those people. The, the club was their life, you know, and it gave me so much pleasure to do that for them, as well as the supporters. But because of what they put in in into the club, it was a it was a great club to manage. It was a, a great club to, to, to be around um, and I'm absolutely delighted that it's grown and grown and grown. And someone said to me, I, I was out, it's not that long ago actually, I was out and someone said to me something about Luton a game about they knew no no they knew me but they were just saying about a game they just played and did I see it? I said no I didn't see it but listen I think they'll do all right I think they'll do well and they went why why did you leave Luton? I said got rid of me <laughs> why did you leave Luton? I mean um, Gary always says that was the most difficult decision he's <laughs> ever had to make whether listen, or not he's lying or not no, I don't know but, but, <laughs> but this is football and you leave yeah. clubs for yeah. one reason or another, don't yeah. you? You leave clubs for, for one reason or another. And, you know, people can turn around and say, do you think they've done the right thing in that? Well, it looks like they did, didn't it? Because <laughs> look where they are, look where they are. That's not to say they wouldn't have been there anyway, but never a bad word from me about anything to do with the people uh, at Luton. Support, fantastic, have always been good to me. When I go back, good to me. Board of Directors, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, from being a Luton manager, I've become a Luton supporter. So. There you go, John. Perfect way to end it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for your hospitality here. Yeah. Thanks for the coffee that I need yeah, to... You ain't drunk it yet. I ain't drunk it yet. Like, <laughs> Good judge. Kill me. <laughs> Good to see you, mate. Likewise, mate. Good. Thank you so much. Good Fine, stuff. Man. Thanks very much. Knock louder. I'm not louder. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, it, was, it was a bit of a... It was a bit... Time. That could yeah, be an outtake. <laughs> 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 it is going to go... It is going to go... Like this. Right. <laughs> okay. I'm not louder. Just... Wait, wait. Just knock the door. It's a knocker. Okay. Sorry, Joe. I think that does work. We got this. We got this. Get back inside. I'm coming. I'm sorry, I can't. It's taking too long. It's taking too long. It's all gone <laughs> up here. You've got to change him. One more time, Andrew. I'm sorry. Oh, it's it's taking too I long to answer the door. It took too long? <laughs> uh, what, do you want me to wait here? Why are you not... <laughs> I love it, I'm so sorry guys. You knocked the door, I come and open it. <laughs> Was that too long opening? No, Andrew, it's him. Hold it together. I do, I do, hang on. Right, I've got the giggles, on. hang on. Hello mate. Hello mate, how, how are, are we? Yeah, good, good to, to see you. Let's Enjoy. have a little chat, yeah, shall we? Come in. Good to see you, buddy. How's great. things? Listen, it's great to see you. Um, 